Lord, we want to thank you. We want to bless your holy name. We thank you for this opportunity you've given us, oh God, even to stand before your presence. We thank you for your word in Psalms 102, verse 12. Lord, you said that this is the set time, oh God, to show favor for the church, oh God, for our nation, and even for our families, oh God, even us as individuals, oh God. We want to thank you because of your word in the name of Jesus. It is the season, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for that favor, Lord. Thank you for your servant, even as he ministers your word. I want to pray that, Lord, he shall speak your oracles, mysteries, in the mighty name of Jesus. And your word shall bring deliverance, shall, be, shall bring healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take control. In Jesus' name I do pray and believe. Amen. 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 That's my wife of 22 years, going to 23. Yes, and uh, she's a great gift. Can we be upstanding? We want to read the word of God. I know we have prayed. Um, I want us to go to the book of Luke, Gospel according to Luke, chapter 9 from verse 23 to 27. Luke chapter 9, 23 to 27. The Bible says, Luke 9, 23 to 27. And he said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For, that, uh, for what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and, lo and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of God. God blesses the reading of the word. You may be seated. So once again, it's to appreciate my resident pastor, Reverend Joyce, for giving me this opportunity and also for our general overseer who has continually given us opportunities to come and minister and speak, uh, speak to us. Our Jew is not around. Uh, of course, many of us know that uh, they had, uh, uh, we had a burial in Western of our father, uh, our grandfather of sorts, uh, spiritual father, that is Reverend, uh, rather Bishop uh, Samuel Mkubwa, who was laid to rest yesterday in a very powerful send-off. And thank you for praying and participating in many ways. Amen. Now, uh, I want to speak the word in the next few minutes, and uh, I'm tying it together with the theme of the month. What is the theme of the month? Advancing after, advancing after the cross, uh, conquest. Uh, for me, the title of my message is Advancing After the cross. Now, very interesting that uh, uh, the peak I've had in the, in the book of Luke. Now, Luke chapter 9 is very ev eventful. It is a chapter, just one chapter, and it begins with the sending of the 12 disciples to go and preach the gospel. It begins with the sending of the 12. Then it's, it's followed with an account of Herod wondering if the beheaded John had resurrected. You know, uh, he was disturbed because he beheaded, you know, uh, uh, John the Baptist. This is John the Baptist. He beheaded him as, uh, as he was told by the wife or the then wife. But uh, he was wondering, who is this continue to preach? Because he thought now that he had beheaded uh, uh, this man called John, then everything would stop. So Jesus comes and is now preaching. In fact, in this uh, same passage, Jesus easily feeds 5,000. You know, he just performs a miracle and 5,000 are fed. Peter, in the same chapter, confesses that Jesus is the Christ and therefore the expected Messiah. And it ends up in transfiguration while there are also multiple healings. According to my Bible, in this but, uh, just one chapter, there are 13 subheadings telling you you can preach 13 sermons and more. Because even for what I'm preaching here, somebody can preach another 10 messages out of it. There are 13 subheading telling us there is too much that is, uh, you know, that is talked about. But our reading today is targeted on the few verses that I've uh, highlighted to us. Now, this ties very well with advancing after the cross. Jesus says 
in Luke 9, 23, after he had said to all, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. It's not one time. It's not a season. It's not when you get born again, but daily and follow me. Now, I was trying to explain in the first service that this statement actually did not make sense to the disciples. Remember, this is before Jesus was crucified. Yes, it is possible that the disciples, the apostles, or those that were hearing him, knew that Romans executed men through crucifixions. Just like we know that once upon a time in Kamete, there used to be, people used to be hanged there. But it does not bother us very much. That is something that happens where? If you, someone asks you how does it happen, you have no idea and you are not interested. This is how it was even for the disciples. They knew crucifixions were happening, especially in the Roman Empire, but they were not too much bothered. But here he says, if anyone would come after me, meaning even them. And therefore it was something, it was something very, you know, it's, it's something that was very confusing for them. If any would come after, after me, must deny himself. I think they qualified on that. They left fishing, they left uh, taxation, they left uh, their trades and came to him. So if anyone is to come after me, he must just but deny himself. But interesting, take the cross and follow after me. So, now, this theme for the month is saying, it says, advancing after the cross. It does, not say, it does not say advancing to the cross. It says advancing after the cross. And I was telling, I, was, I knew this must have come from Pastor Masai. He's the one who is philosophical and apologetic. You know, uh, apologetics is, is uh, the defense of one faith. He is the man who loves that. And I thought that was his advancing after the cross. So basically what this is saying is that we are advancing just as our theme is, advancing for Congress. But we have a guide and we have a pattern. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a guide and a pattern. And what is the guide and the pattern? The guide and the pattern is the cross. And this is what Jesus was also referring to them. Unless you take up your cross daily. Now in the next few days, Jesus is to be, you know, it is to be betrayed by one of the one of the his disciples of his close people and given over to Herod. And then he is to be tried. And in that, he is also to carry his very own cross all the way to Calvary, to that place of the skull. And this would bring meaning because you now tying it back to what they had been told at this time, that would mean what we saw Jesus, what Peter saw Jesus do, what John saw Peter do that they must, they must do until they reach where they are supposed to be. And it's not different. This statement was, was for them then, but it is for us today. That unless you deny yourself, now I think what I want to bring to us is what then are we to deny ourselves for us to be able to attain eternity? Yes, we thank God that we are born again. We have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. But just like you are, you are frontiered where you, uh, you know, where you take out the, the, the grass, and because the rains have come, grass begins to grow again. So it is with our walk with Jesus. Those days we felt a lot of joy. You know, a lot of joy, a lot of peace, a lot of enthusiasm. But over time, we have gone down. The reason is, kuna magugu. So, today I want us to, to look at some few things. Uh, our reading today is, however, targeted on the few verses that talk about the sacrifice of following Jesus. This marries with the theme of the youth man advancing up the cross. Jesus was giving this discourse before he was crucified. I want to highlight some five things that you must deny yourself. In other words, you must let go. If you have them, you must let go. You must forego them. For the precious promise of eternity with, with God, you must just let go these things. You cannot have them and continue to follow after Christ. 
And the first thing I want to tell you, so then what is, is this that we must forgo, to follow Christ? The first thing is the world. Dunia. Uh, we parents, uh, when we are talking now to older children, uh, especially the teens and going, unaambia wachana na dunia. See, that's your vocabulary. Praise the Lord. See, that's your vocabulary. And if it is not of your vocabulary, that's exactly what your mom told you and what your dad told you or what your guardian told you. Wachana na ulimwengu. First John chapter 2, verses 15, 16, and 17. The Bible says, First John, the letter to John, chapter 2 and verses 15, first letter of John, chapter 2 and verses 15, it says, Do not love the world. Hallelujah. It is telling your neighbor, do not love the world. It is also telling you, do not love the world. Or the things in the world. The world has things with it. Do not love the world or even the things in the world. If anyone, including you, loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. In other words, eternity has been lost. Let me, let me tell you, brethren, when we love the world, we are telling eternity with God bye-bye. We are saying we are parting ways with you. 16 says, for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father but from the world and the world, verse 17, and the world is passing away along with its desires but whoever does the will of God abides forever. The world is what we must deny ourselves of. We must just let go. We must forego it so that we may gain eternity. Now this is exactly the same thing that happened to Jesus. Jesus, after he was baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him, he went out into the desert to fast and pray. And it's very interesting because most of us, when we fast and pray, we do not expect temptations. But the Bible records Jesus, who is our God, also was tempted during when he was fasting and praying. Praise the Lord. And that's why, just when you are fasting, is when your neighbor cooks fish. And who is the neighbor? The neighbor is your wife. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's the same day that, you know, chicken is not now boiled, but it's fried. Wow. Just when you're fasting. And yesterday I was fasting... I mean, uh, yesterday I was not fasting and nobody cooked those things. Eh? The normal things were... <laughs> Praise the Lord. The Bible says, the, uh, Jesus was rather tested on this, the last of the eyes, the pride of life, and the last of the flesh. It's the same things that he was tempted with. He was told, if you, you know, even with power, he was told, if you jump, angels will be waiting for you. Indeed, the scripture says so in Psalm 91. That he post his angels concerning you. That you shall not dash your feet on rocks and on stones. But he realized that this was temptation. This is the world. Satan stood there and told him, if you just but bow. You know, I'm going to give you the whole world. I'm going to give it back. And by the way, Satan was justified. You know how he was justified? When he was hurled down from heaven, he came down and he became the prince of the air. That's what the Bible says. He became the prince of the air. In other words, he was in charge in the world. That's why the Bible says, I'm building my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. In other words, the kingdom of God shall advance and pick people from the prince of the air and get them back to God. These are temptations that come to us. But for us to attain eternity, we must just get rid of the world. Hallelujah. So the first thing is, for you to gain eternity... Make sure that the world is not together with you. I put a statement here and it says, when you don't mingle, in other words, when the world, you know, when you don't mingle with the world, you become segregated. I want to explain that. When you do not mingle with the world, they segregate you. Praise the Lord. When you do not answer back to their call, to their emails, 
that they need you in certain place to do the things they do in the world, you become segregated. Because the first time they send and you do not reply, they think this person, you know, this is not the right person. So the next time they begin planning for their things without you. When you do not mingle, you become segregated. But do you know when we are in the other side, segregation is consecration. And therefore you become sanctified. And therefore we should not worry about the world and what is in the world because God as he promises us, and we shall see later, he's going to give us far much more. Number two, number two, number one is get rid of the world or make sure that you're not connected to the world. Number two is love of money. What must you deny yourself? What must you forego? Now, I'm very careful. I'm not saying money. Praise the Lord. I want to clarify. I'm not saying that deny yourself money or deny yourself or forego money. I'm saying the love of money. And I'll, 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 I'll talk about it. First Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to verses 10. Let's build a background for that. The Bible says 6, 6 uh, of First Timothy all the way to 10. The Bible says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. Nobody, even those that are buried with gold in their hands, they leave it there and it is of no use to them. But, verses 8, but if we have food and clothing, with this we will be content. But those who desire to be rich, those who desire to be rich, in other words, love money, fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction, meaning hell. Verses 10 is key for us here. It says, For the love of money is the root, is a root of all kinds of evil. I like it in this version. It says, For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. The love of of money. I was telling the first church that um, all our trainings in our curriculums, all the way from baby class, they tell us how money is important. The class that you are attending right now, the one that you finished the last year, it, ha it was not telling you anything else. It was telling you the importance of money. Everything we do, all the way to PhD, even, uh, you know, even if we go to PhD, it is always telling us how important. But I want to tell you that you, we have to change our thoughts and our hearts. The love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Why do people uh, kill one another? Is it not money? Whereas money is involved, um, a few weeks ago, uh, some people stole some, some, something in, uh, in Isli. And what happens to them? They were very happy. They even went to Mombasa, I suppose, to go. But now I hear different stories. Isn't it true? You have watched news and you know those stories. It is because of money. Where money, where the love of money is involved. Praise the Lord. Now there are some people here. For the last five years, ten years, you have been grieved and agitated. Because you ulikopeshea mtu elfu nne na miatano. Na alikurulishia miatano peke yake. Up to today, 4,000. And even a breakthrough here. Pastor Joyce will preach and you cannot get a breakthrough. Why? Don't love money. Praise the Lord. Believe God. God can give you more than 4,500. Hallelujah. God can give you more than that 100,000 that was taken for you. It was precious. We know you got it from the savings account and you had no other money. Does it mean that you have not lived up to today? Yeah, this is five years. This is seven years. And you have lived up to today. Go and send an SMS and tell him, just tell him, God bless you so much. Don't even tell him why. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The love of the Bible says it is the root of all evil. But that is, that is Paul. Now, Jesus also adds way to this. Matthew chapter 6 and verses 
24. And verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. This is Jesus speaking. This is what he comments about money. And somebody said that Jesus talked very much about money. Matthew 6, 24. The Bible says, No one can serve two masters. That is a statement of life. No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Tap your neighbor. Tell them I'm telling you. <laughs> this is Jesus speaking. Jesus spoke about these things. He said you cannot serve two. And I want to tell you, it's difficult. But I, uh, am I saying that you don't earn? No, go and work. But let not money be the defining thing. Now, I've heard of testimonies. I know of a preacher uh, because the testimonies are uh, online. A preacher from, uh, that got born again in Somalia. Uh, you, some of you know, he's called Pastor Aiden. And uh, he does a lot of ministry in Tanzania. He came, uh, he came to Kenya. He was giving the testimony. And he was saying the difference between Christians and most, some of the other religions is that other religions are ready to sacrifice. He said that his dad started his business all over again because a mosque needed to be built. And sasa ilikuwa imefika pahali. So he went, sold off his business. And all the monies they had was taken there. And he said, you know, they are God. You know, they are God. They are God who will take care of, of them. But here we are. You know, some of us, we come from those, me, I, come, I have come from those mainstream churches, huko, tulitoka huko, uh, with Pastor Geshoke and some few others. You know, there are those churches that we came from. But you know you are local church. Msinki iliwekwa 1983, 1994, 2001. And that church is not finished up to now. <laughs> And let me tell you, you have a contribution in this life. Because if your mom cannot do it, you can do You know, you can go at ile plot yako uweke hapo, and God will give you two more plots on the other end. Anyway, that is a gospel that can only be preached to a few, but it is true. Praise the Lord. We need to come to a place where we can detach ourselves from money and things. Haven't you had testimony, and don't we read them from books, of how somebody was going for ministry and somebody gave them their house free of charge. A house was staying and moved out in one, wakasubuka one year, two, three, three, four. And the fullness of time, he does not have one house. He has even flats. Now, he can build in six months for any other pastor who is coming along. Praise the Lord. Amen. The love of money is the root so does it mean that we don't get money? Me, I want you to be billionaires. By the way, I'm going to pray for you to be billionaires, but I have a problem. Is billionaires to become, to get away from the Lord or to propagate the kingdom of God? I'm, I, I'll pray for you. I have that grace. Hallelujah. Not like you believe me. Revelation <laughs> chapter 3. This one, this is interesting. Let's go to Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 to 19. I don't have it in my, uh, my notes. This is, this is a good one. Now, uh, for those that may not know, the book of Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, it, it, has, uh, uh, it is writing to different churches. There are actually seven churches. And uh, scholars have said that the seven churches represent Either the age or the place where a certain church is, you know, even as, as GCI, we could be in one of the stages of the seven churches. Or even where the church finds itself in a certain season. So this particular church is called Laodicea. Now I want you to hear what John, the leveler, is saying. He says, I know your works. Amen. That you are neither... No, let me tell you, brethren, that is a very dangerous place.
please, in all your doings, in whatever you do, make sure that you are known by heaven, whether you are cold or hot. It is very bad. Let's continue. It says, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or please stand in one place. If you are cold, we know you are cold and we don't have a problem because you are going to hell and that, and you don't mind about that. And if you are hot, we know you are going to heaven and like in the cold. Let's continue. Verse 16 says what? It says, so then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot. <laughs> this one is good. This is NKJV. I will vomit. <laughs> Amen. This is God speaking. This is uh, John, uh, the Revelator, getting the words from Jesus. He says, I will vomit you out of my mouth. In other words, you shall not be under my protection. Let's continue. Verse 17, it says what? Because you say, now this is it. I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. I do not know that, and you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Just there. Yeah, put it in ESV. Just put it in ESV. I want you to understand. I hope you are going to understand this. ESV says what? For you say, I am, and I have. Now, I was saying, I hope that is not GCI Central. Praise the Lord. Hasn't God prospered GCI? But now, if we trust in our riches... And in our prosper, uh, prosperity, the Bible says we are wretched, we are pitiable, we are poor, we are blind and naked, verse 18 and 19, and then we finish. It says what? I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire, so that you may be rich, and white garments, so that you may clothe yourself, and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen, and salve to anoint your eyes, so that you may see. And then verses 19, is it 19 or 18? 19, those whom I love, I reprove, I discipline, so be zealous and repent. The love of money. This is, what, this is what Jesus is talking about. He says, you must just deny yourself. Take up the cross and this daily and follow after me or follow after the cross. We are advancing, yes, but we must, we must follow after the cross by making sure that we are not entangled with the love of money. Hallelujah. Number three. Number three. You can't forget this, my points. That my points are interesting. Number three. Relatives and friends. We are talking about what you have to deny yourself, what you have to forego, what you have to let go. Relatives and friends. Now, let me give it a book, right? Genesis chapter 13 and verses 14. Genesis 13, 14. Do you know that people around you, the closest to you, might be the people that deny you heaven? Now, I'm not saying that you are turning our dua. If you are paying fees for your auntie's son or your cousin or whoever else, please continue. We demand that. And even God demands that. But do not be entangled. Uh, Genesis chapter 13 and 14, it says... The Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, the Lord said to Abraham, this is not even Abraham, Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, just before I continue, you understand that Lot separated. It is not Abraham that separated himself from, uh, from, uh, from Lot. It is Lot that separated. Meaning, it is possible when you begin to pursue God and his righteousness, his ways, People that are around you, including your relatives and your friends, they might, they might leave you. But it comes with blessings. The Lord visited Abram. It's only after. They were together for a very long time. So much so, I guess many years. For them to have prospered, mpaka there, you know, the buildings that walikuwa wamejenga, zilikuwa zinaanza kukrash. Wanasema, pana, I think he building ni mimi nikuwa nimejenga. I'm using buildings because in what we plot. Na muna understand plot kuliko ngombe. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yani you have a such a, we have the whole of Siokimau, mmejenga, 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 
mpaka sasa unasema hapana i think this one was mine they began quarreling because of the weather how many years were, they, were those many years yet as soon as lot separated himself god comes lift up your eyes this is uh, god talking to uh, to uh, to Abraham says, lift up your eyes and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward, including where Lot had gone, including where Lot had gone. For all the land you see, I'll give to you and to your offspring forever. Once, uh, the, I was telling the first church, there's a time that I, I, I talked here, I don't know whether it was a, a message on, on, on marriage or what it was, uh, but I was, I, was telling, uh, I was telling us that uh, uh, that, that point has gone. And it will come back. <laughs> yeah, let's continue. Matthew 19, 29. I'll get it and come back to you. Matthew 19, 29 says, And everyone who has left, this is about you leaving your friends and your relatives. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mother or children or lands for my namesake will receive a hundred and will inherit eternal life. Some of the people, some of the people that are hinder us from what we are supposed to get are our relatives. I was telling us that uncles, aunties, which is also yourself, can hinder people from going to heaven. I remember my, my, my very own father. He was a righteous man. Yet, the man wielded a lot of, great, a lot of power. That it was very, not very easy for me to tell him, but somehow God eventually helped me to speak the gospel to him. And within many other people, he was able to be born again. It sometimes demands that you separate yourself from your relatives and your friends. But in the end, you are going to get them back. And everyone who has left houses, most important, brothers, sisters, father, mother, children, and even uh, properties, lands, for my namesake, will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. Luke 14, 25, 26, 27. Don't worry about the many scriptures. You can pick whatever uh, you want. Now, Luke 14, 25 says, Now great crowds accompanied him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother. Can you imagine Jesus, because this is marked with red, can you imagine Jesus advocating that you hate your mother and your father? But this, he said to explain how important this eternity is. In other words, you have to sacrifice everything else, even if it is your very own mother and your own, own relatives and friends. It says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciples. It talks about a precious faith bequeathed to us. Hallelujah. We have eternity at stake. We go to the world. We go to the love of money. We go to our relatives and friends. What are we going to be losing? We are going to lose eternity with Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 27 of the same 14, it says, Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me, he cannot be my disciple. He who does not bear his own cross, the scripture that we had read ahead was saying daily, and come after me, cannot be my disciple. Uh, you know, it is good for you to know that we subscribe to an expensive venture. We, you know, we subscribe to something that is expensive. It is eternity. It's about a thousand years with the Lord and then eternity thereafter. Do you know we shall come back and reign with Jesus? We shall be given places to govern. We shall be given counties maybe or locations. We shall be given places to take care of for a thousand years. And God in Christ shall be our king. And thereafter, we shall have eternity with God. Hallelujah. Let's go to the next one. So, relatives and friends. And on relatives and friends, this is the reason we skip offers and parties and escapades. This is why we skip sleepovers. Praise the Lord. It might be in your cousin's place, but I want to tell you if you don't take care of your soul, that is the time that you go back to the drinking that you had left 15 years ago. 
If you don't take care of your soul, that's the time that you get indulgences into drugs and things, and you shall lose your very own salvation. The reason we skip offers, parties, escapades, is because we are pursuing eternity with Christ. Number four, as we begin to, uh, to wind up, is vain talk. So number one was the world. Number two was the love of money. Number three, relatives and friends. Number four, vain talk and pointless discussions. I call them gossips. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. The Bible says, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. It's one of the scriptures that we use when we are commissioning leaders. A worker who has not, who not need to be ashamed, rightly handling or dividing the word of truth, but avoid irreverent bubble. For it will lead people into more and more ungodliness and their talk will spread like gangrene. Among them are Humanius and Philetus, who have shoved from the truth, saying that the resurrection has already happened. They are upsetting the faith of some. In other words, if, even if you have opportunity, please remember the church. For those that are members of our church, uh, and that have gone through the new members class, we usually give you a charge. That charge is to say, I shall not gossip. You remember something like that? We, you shall not gossip about the church and about, about its leadership, even if the opportunity provides itself. And I was giving the example of, in the Bible, of somebody who gossiped not about the pastor, he did not gossip about the Levite, he, you know, he gossiped or he bubbled. Or he, uh, the, the word here is bubble. He bubbled concerning his very own blood brother. And that lady was called Miriam. You remember the story of Miriam? Miriam came together with the brothers and others. And they were wondering, what is in this Moses? That Moses, an ordinary man. Somebody, first of all, who had ran away for 40 years. As we were here, we were left with Pharaoh and we did all the hard work. Even when he came back, he could not do the, you know, the, the thing alone. He had to use my brother Aaron because he's a stammerer. Does it mean he's the only one that God can speak to? And by the way, maybe they were justified. They did a lot of work because when God would speak to, uh, to Moses, he would come and tell Aaron, and Aaron would organize. He was the operations manager. And Miriam there most likely was also helping. So maybe this man, Moses, would only sit and give instructions. So they are wondering, what is it? And then leprosy, the Bible says, struck Miriam. And it took Moses to go and pray for the sister. Let me tell you, Vain talk, gossips, pointless discussion. Apart from this, there are also people who, who, come, you know, who come up with their own doctrines and, try, and begin to bring it into our midst. Now, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 4 says, Let there be no filthiness, no foolish talk, no crude joking. Uh, some other version says, coarse joking, which are out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. Amen. But I think there is a remedy for this. Luke 6, 45. There's a remedy for this. Why people gossip, why people are tailbearing their ministers is because of Luke chapter 6 and verses 45. It says, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth the good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth the evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. You know that statement? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. In other words, what you have reserved in your heart is most likely what is going to get out. So if there is nothing good concerning your church, concerning your neighbor, concerning your husband, concerning your wife, concerning your children, concerning your parents, concerning your friends, Basically, that is what you shall be speaking forth. And right now, as I'm speaking, you can tell about one, two, three, four people. 
And I'm calling an altar call after this. Yeah, maybe the one, two, three, four people is yourself included. Praise the Lord. Psalm 119 verses 11 says, and this is powerful, I have hidden your word in my heart. In other words, I have reserved in my reservoir, I have put your word. I have hidden your word in my heart so that I may not sin against. In other words, I'm bringing in good treasure in my spirit, in my soul that when I'm confronted by the issues of life every day, what is going to come out of me is something that is going to help a man. Hallelujah. Amen. The last one, the last one, and we shall be winding up, is sin and iniquity. We are talking about the things that you must let go, the things that you must uh, forego, the things that you must deny yourself. Do not be sitting where gossipers and tell bearers drive. Please separate yourself. Sin and iniquity is the next one. First, uh, Second Timothy chapter 2 and verses 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God started having the seal. In other words, having the stamp of having this assurance. The Lord knoweth that them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now this is talking about let those that name the name of Christ, those that name the name of Christ are actually sons of God, born again sons of God. This is not for, this is for, not for the unbeliever. This is for born again sons of God. For those that name the name of the Lord, they must depart from iniquity. The day you got born again, you were sanctified. The other life is forgotten. But now God desires and demands that you remain in righteousness. Then verse 20 says, but in, the, in a great house, they are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and iron, some of honor, some of, uh, to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, these uh, bad things, iniquity and sin, he shall be a vessel and to honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use. And prepared for every good work. Amen. Amen. Now I want to encourage us as the church. Now the things that I've talked about are basically for believers. Most, actually all of them. It's only the believer that can be encouraged to, to let go the world. To let go the love of money. To let go friends and relatives or vain talk or sin and in iniquity. Revelation chapter 3 verses 2, as, I, as you prepare yourself to rise up in the next two minutes, Revelation chapter 3 verses 2, it says, it says to you, wake up my brother and strengthen what remains and is about to die. For I have not found your works complete in the sight of my God. This is John the Revelator receiving a revelation from, uh, from Christ towards the church. And this is the church of Sardis. Wake up and strengthen what remains. You church of Sardis, and that could be GCI Central. Strengthen what remains because things have gone down. I told you, uh, maybe it's just like that outside that you have chopped. Umefieka. But magugu ya meaza kumea tena. You know, wake up. Strengthen what remains that is about to die. I have not found your works complete. Could it be that GCI Central or you as an individual, our God has not found us complete in the sight of God? Remember then what you received and had. Keep it and repent. If you not wake up, I will come like a thief and you not know the hour. At what hour I will come against you. Let's be upstanding.